<laughs> and we are back between the edges on day five, is it? Day five, I've lost track of time. <laughs> <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine. I, unfortunately, I, yes. So, Adam Andelson. A Adam Andelson? Adelson. Adelson. Yeah. Nice to meet you, sir. I'm Lee Savage. Nice You're on Between Two Yetters. And we are, we, our attention got distracted very quickly by the bullets. Yeah. So do you want to talk about this first or you? Yeah, well, let me talk about the artwork first. Okay. It's a little more interesting. Uh, so, uh, don't well, put yourself down. We'll see. Thank you. <laughs> so the artist's name is Federico Uribe. He's originally from Colombia, but he's been living here in Miami for the past 20 years. A local Miami artist? Yes. Yeah. Cool, okay. And he uses all sorts of materials. Colored pencils, electrical wire, shoes. His most recent series, though, are bullets. And so he repurposes bullets into the shape of animals. Beautiful animals. These are shotgun shells. Yeah. Shotgun shells and the, the, the gold part are twenty are different calibers, like twenty two caliber. As an Englishman I know next to nothing about guns. Yeah. I know it's a shotgun cartridge though. Right. But it's just epic. What, what, okay, so let's just start with the artist. From Colombia. Yeah. Um tell me about him. Yeah, well he is you can't miss him when you see him because he makes all of his own clothes too. I mean, he's a pretty eccentric <laughs> looking guy. And he wants people to look at objects in a different way. And so bullets, I think, are a perfect thing for that. It's an otherwise violent medium, right? It's otherwise like, it's an explosive, dangerous, deadly thing, but yet he turns them into these beautiful animals and that are full of life. Huh. So it's turning on his head. Yeah. What is, so you said he did a series before this as well. He, he, he's been working for the past 20 years with a variety of materials. He started with colored pencils. He likes colored pencils because when he was a kid he used to draw with colored pencils and it brought him a lot of joy to do. And now he wants to bring that joy to people in another way. So he takes the actual colored pencils, breaks them up and constructs them into like dogs or cats or jaguars. And he's making people think about that artistic medium in another way. Now bullet shells are much different because it carries so much weight, let's say, politically. It's, they're, they're a very controversial medium, depending on where you're from. We've showed them all over the world. I've shown this work in Texas. In Texas, they're an homage to hunting, where we are, our gallery is in New York and in Boston. In Boston, it's anti-gun. We've shown them in Abu Dhabi. There, it's like sport. Like, they go out in the, the desert, you know, just like spray bullets. We've shown them in Colombia. Oh, God, all right. In, in Colombia, they represent real death, real war. Now, this is the country that he's from. It's amazing, actually. The medium you choose to make your art with, so irrespective of what you've made it into, is yeah. what we made it out of. Right. Wow. Okay. I, I did not see that when I first saw it. I just saw a magnificent horse made out of bullets. Yeah. But the, the deeper context of it... Right. Yeah, and, it's, and the conversation keeps going. I mean, it's so interesting to interact with people at this fair specifically, because this fair attracts people from all over the world. And yeah. The responses are across the board. Good God. We won't, all, we won't talk about price. That's. <laughs> you want to get in contact? What, what's the gallery? The gallery is Adelson Galleries. We're located in New York and in Boston. So, okay, as a gallery, uh, I am a complete newbie to the art world. I'm from the marine industry, yeah. soupy arts and stuff like that. Yeah. But to me, the art world is very elitist. Elitist? Yeah. Should it be? I don't think it should be. Or is it? I think that there are aspects of the art world that certainly are elitist, that there are aspects that are, in my view, pretentious. Some are. But art is, some, is representative of culture. I think there are aspects of culture that are elitist, and certainly that there are artworks that respect that. Yeah. Them. But there are all sorts of artists and all sorts of artworks. And for someone bringing it back to Federico, this is artwork that's supposed to speak to everyone. In my opinion, you shouldn't need a page or even a paragraph to describe what you're looking for. Right? <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, that's conceptual art. There, that has its own merit. But yeah, all your stuff is actually it's beautiful stuff. Right. It's not just a, a dot on a canvas. It is actually... And there is, there is significance to that work as well. I don't mean to, to demean conceptual art all together. We don't need to lump that in and I can talk art historically about why that's significant. 
but for my personal enjoyment, I prefer to look at something that's inherently beautiful. There's some skill involved in it, and there's some depth of meaning. Skill, yeah. big one. I've just been speaking to somebody on another booth about how arts, people, uh, are people coming to this show to buy stuff because it is intrinsically valuable, or do they come to this show to find something they love? There are three types of people, I think, that buy art. Okay. There's the people that buy it that's for cash. It's like, how much is this going to be worth in five years? And anyone who thinks they have the answer of that is it's wrong. Shit. Okay. I'm not sure if I'm not supposed to curse. I'm sorry. Oh, we can bleep that bit out. Um, there's the people that buy it for fashion. Like, I'm going to buy this because it looks great with my curtains and it's, it'll go perfectly above the couch. That's fine. I like that better than the first category. But my favorite type of collector is the person that loves to buy stuff of passion. They just love it. There's something about the work that they, they just like that, that moves them emotionally. And then they, and they have to. And is that why. So the gallery is your your name, so I'm assuming you're the yeah. gallery director, is it? Or? Yes, yeah, I'm the director of the gallery. I opened the gallery in Boston five years ago. Um, my father's had a gallery for 50 years, based out of New York. So your family is art, uh, it's in your it's in DNA, yeah. 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 How, what was it like opening your first gallery? Do you have to have like an artist to get going with? Or? Yeah, well, see, I'm very lucky because even though my father specialized in 19th and 20th century American art, my dad, Warren Adelson, wrote the catalog resonated on John Singer Sargent and Mary Cassatt, kind of these great American painters. He still represented a couple contemporary artists, including Andrew Stevovich, which is an artist that we have shown here. So I started with the few artists that he did represent that were living in contemporary. And then I branched out and kind of find, found my own artists. And, um, Frederica being one of them. Frederica being the first, first real artist that I started representing. And it's been, yeah, it's been scary, it's been exciting, it's, but it's, I feel like it's my calm, it's my passion. Like I wake up excited to go to work because I'm surrounded by beautiful things and talking to interesting people. Yeah. It, uh, to me, walking around here, you, you're one of the few booths, stands, that actually evokes excitement. I mean, yeah, you can go and, let's not, dis, let's not, I'm it's new to this industry, so let's not disparage anybody. <laughs> but absolutely. Cool, so you're in Boston and? In New York. So my dad still has his gallery in Midtown okay. Manhattan. Now we're moving to Chelsea. So oh, in New York? In Chelsea, in New York. That's okay. Kind of the main gallery district in Manhattan. So we'll be moving there, there in, the, in the next year. So did you study art or is it just you didn't need to because? I studied art history. Yeah, the history of art. Where was that? At Boston University. Oh, okay. And so that's how I ended up in Boston because I grew up oh, in New York. Okay went out to Boston University, kind of fell in love with Boston. It's this cute that, provincial town. Boston, yeah. I, I, I only went there once. The Isabella Gardner Museum. Yes, yeah, it's a fantastic institution. If you've ever, never been there, when you go to Boston, is this, it is Boston, right? Yeah, Boston. She moved that house from Italy or something? Brick it's, by it's, brick or something? It, it's built, it's based off of an Italian palazzo, yeah. She, she built it specifically in mind uh, turning it into a museum one but she lived there. I mean, it's this amazing. I, I, it's probably a decade since I've been there, but I, I'm terrible with names. I've already, I've already forgotten yours. Adam. Adam, Adam Adelson. Adelson. But that one never left me. And that's, again, that's what the art I, as a non-person in this industry, love about buying art. Yeah. Because you buy it because you like it. But from what we see, from I see, is it's the apparent value of it trumps your like of it. Is that the right way of putting it? Meaning the value of it can jaundice you into thinking you like it more than you really do. Could be. That's a whole psychological, philosophical yeah. conversation I don't know if I can get into. No, I know, I know, I know. This is just, this is just a fun little chat show, yeah. but <laughs> we like probing some of the deeper questions. Oh, it's wonderful. And um, so if people want to get in contact with you, I mean, you just yeah. sold the bear. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, you missed it. The bear. I can send you a picture of it. Maybe you can lay it over. And there's people standing in front of the camera maybe every time. We can just cut to that. Yeah, just cut but the bear the was camera. this sort of size? Yeah, it was nine and a half feet tall. It's incredible. Silver, all made out of silver bullet shells going like this. And there was a big hole in the stomach with the, with, filled in with like red shotgun shells. It was sold to a rock and roll. 
guy that's in like a metal rock band that's going to his new house in Miami Beach. We actually delivered it this morning. <laughs> Wonderful. Cool. But if you want to get in touch with me, it's Adelson Galleries. You can find us on Instagram. My sister's in charge of it. It's a family business. My sister's in charge of social media. My brother works in sales. How many followers do you have? Mm, I think like 3,000. It's all yeah. about the follower. We're, we're only just started with this yeah. and yeah, our Instagram's. As of today, it's weak, but in I've got big aspirations. Yeah, yeah. 100 million followers at one day. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, it's it's a minefield. So yeah, she's she's she does that side of it. Yeah. You do the gallery, yeah. and you're trying to attract new artists as well all the time, or is it? I'm always looking. I think part of the people ask me that question all the time: How do you find new artists? And the reality is, I'm around it all the time. I'm going to museums. I'm going to art fairs like this, to galleries, wherever I travel. It's my primary purpose. Hmm. So it's always around me, and I know what I like. And essentially, what we show is what I like. Awesome. Okay, I'm, 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 my, my faith in this industry is being not restored, but being built up because Good. people do actually genuinely love what they do. Absolutely. Yeah. Doing it for the right reasons. Yeah. Well, in my mind, I don't know. Sure. Again, I'm not disparaging. <laughs> Wonderful to meet you. Good luck on the last few hours. Okay. Thank you. You got a card, I'll have you.